There we go. Hi guys, I haven't heard from any of you, so I hope that the review of the trig from the last block went okay. Remember, if you have any questions on any of the problems, all you have to do is let me know. You can re send me uh, text to me via Remind. Uh, you can post a note on ESPY. I am checking it throughout the day, and I will make follow-up videos and work out each problem that's requested. Okay. Um, so today we're going to skip into to section 8.6. We will do 8.5 when I get back, but I want to be there because uh, we just need to work on some visual stuff for that one. So anyway, uh, we'll go back to that and we're going to skip over to the law of sines and cosines. And the law of sines is really, really easy to use, um, but you're going to have to remember that the law of sines um, we're going to use on triangles that are not right triangles okay so this is when you're dealing with any other triangle just not a right triangle and what you use the law of signs for is to find missing measures so missing sides missing angles whatever they might ask you to do and you would use the law of signs in situations where you're given two angles in the non-included side or two angles in the included side or two sides in the non-included angle so any one of these three situations would be a candidate to use the law of sines and the formula goes like this so remember our triangle right the angles so uh, let's see we have you know angle A here and angle B here and angle C here and uh, remember that the sides opposite those angles we label with the same letter just in lowercase so here's side A and side B and side C opposite of angle C side A is opposite of angle A, side B is opposite of angle B. Okay, So in the formula it says the sine of the angle A is to its, its side A. That's equal to the sine of B over B is equal to the sine of C over C. Now you're not going to have all three bits of information. What you want to do is use any two combinations, any, any two of these in combination and set them equal to each other and fill it in with what you know. So let's look at an example from your book. This is from page um, 582. <clears throat> this is where it starts in the book and um, I just redrew example one here to show you. So I have triangle ABC here and I have two angles and a non-included side if you think of this side or this could be a non-included side so I've definitely got an AA uh, S situation two angles and the non-included side it's not a right triangle if I find the third angle here by the triangle sum theorem I just subtract 97 plus 21 from 180 oops I just made a mistake I'm using my calculator so I don't make an error. Uh, and you know you can find that this this angle here is 62, right? Because we know that all the angles in every triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So by triangle sum theorem, you could find the measure of that angle, um, and uh, you know find um, what you need to now. Uh, but remember, we're going to use what they're giving us. Okay, we're not going to start throwing extra stuff in here and by the way I know nothing about this side I have no clue so what they're asking us to do is find X so that's what I'm gonna do so to use the law of signs I'm gonna try and find any two angles and the sides opposite such that either one of the angles or one of the sides is unknown so for instance I know that angle A is 97 and the side opposite is 16 so I can say the sine of 97 is to the side opposite it that's equal to well hey I know that the sine of 21 because remember this was given this orange angle I just you know used my calculator but what was given was everything that's not orange here so uh, the sine of angle C is to its side okay and when we have an equal sign in between two ratios or two fractions that means we can cross multiply so if I multiply these two, I'm going to have x times the sine of 97. Okay, So we don't put the dot or anything in between with the trig function. Um, we just do x sine 97. It means x times the sine of 97. And we bring down our equal sign, and then we cross 
multiply these two so it's 16 times the sine of 21. Now the thing is, is we've got to get x by itself. And if you remember, this sine of 97 or cosine or tangent or whatever it is, whatever you're dealing with, when you put it in your calculator, you get a number. It's just a number. So how do we, you know, if we think about, so I'm going to sidetrack here for a second, but if you think of, you know, 2x is equal to 10, let's say, how do we get x by itself? We divide by the number that's being multiplied to x to isolate it, right? So you're going to do the same thing here. I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 97. Okay, so those are going to cancel. So what we have is x is equal to 16 sine 21 over sine of 97. Now we're going to have to use our calculator to figure out what x is, so I'm going to do that here. And you know, I know this thing has a little light somewhere on it. Let me see. Is that a light? Well, I think you can see it. So I'm going to put this into my calculator exactly how I see it. Now again, I don't have an FSA calculator at home, so you're going to have to do like 21 sine times 16 divided by 97 sine equals to get the number. You're going to have to go backwards. But for a graphing calculator, you're going to put it in exactly how you see it. Make sure you're in, remember, make sure your mode is in degrees. Okay, go to your home screen. So 16 sine 21, close the parenthesis, divided by sine of 97, close the parenthesis, and we get about 5.7. I'm going to round to the nearest whole number. So um, I'm going to say it's about 6. So what I know from looking back at the picture is that the side length here, AB, is 6, roughly. It's not quite 6, but you know, you'll be told what to round to uh, when that arises. Okay, here's another one. So I have this little triangle here, and you know, I know what's given to me. I know that angle B is 60, angle A is 78. I know I have the side opposite A, and I know I have the side opposite B. So guess what? I'm going to say the sine of 60 is to x, right, goes to as the sine of 78 is to the side opposite it. Cross multiplying, I'm going to have 8 sine 60 is equal to x sine 78. Again, I need to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by the sine of 78. And I'm going to put that in, so you know, these are going to cancel. So now x is isolated. And when I put that into my calculator, okay, I've got 8 sine, oops, let me put this so you can see it, 8 sine of 60, okay, divided by sine of 78 is equal to oh, 7.08. So x is 7.08 roughly. Okay, and again you'll be told what to round to, so it might be the nearest tenth, it might be the nearest, you know, whole number. It depends on the situation. Okay? Now, suppose we have one, and I didn't get to make one for this, but I'm gonna do it right now. Suppose we have a triangle like so. So this is KHJ and this is X degrees, and this is 45 degrees, um, this is 10, and this is 8. And we're asked to find X again. Well X is now an angle. That's okay. Okay, I, I don't know what that angle is. I'm going to find it, but I can use the law of sines. Why? Because I have two angles and a non-included side kind of situation going on. So um, I can use it. All right? And in fact, uh, in this situation, it's a side um, side, side angle. Um, but anyway, let's try it. Okay, I'm just going to say the sine of K, because I don't know what angle K is, it's X is to 10 as the sine of 45 is to 8. See what I'm doing here? Cross multiplying, we're going to have 8 sine of k 
is equal to 10 sine of 45. So I know that the sine of k is 10 sine 45 over 8, right? Now, remember what we did in our calculators when we want to find angles? We write out our function, but to actually get the angle by itself, we're going to have to take that arc sign. So essentially, I'm not going to write this down, but I'm doing it to remind you that in your calculator, once you have your equation solved for the sine of some angle, you're going to pop that into your calculator and get the answer. So 10 sine of 45 over 8. Okay. So again, I'm going to put it in just like I see it, but first, move this over. First, I have to press my arc sine key. So second sine, 10 sine 45, close the parentheses, divided by 8, close the parentheses, equal, and you should get about 62 degrees. So what I know is that angle K is 62 degrees, and K is equal to X, so it's about 62 degrees. So this angle here is 62. Okay, here's another one, give you one more using the law of sines. So TWS 14, so I'm just filling this in here. This is 63, this is x, this is 12.5, okay, and again, we need to find x, right? Okay, what do I know? I need to know an angle and its side opposite, right? Even if it's an unknown. So, you know, I'm not going to use these two because I don't know the angle, nor and I, and I don't know the side either, and there's no way I can find it. So, um, anyway, that's excluded, so I'm left with these two. So I can say the sine of t is to 14 as the sine of 63 is to 12.5. Cross multiplying, I'm going to have 12.5 sine of t is equal to 14 sine of 63. You want to get that sine of t by itself. That's 14 sine of 63 divided by 12.5. And at this point, you just want to grab your calculator and plug it in. So let's do it. So second sine, 14 sine of 63, close it, divided by 12.5, and it looks like we get about 86 degrees if I round <clears throat> to the nearest degree. So See, the sine of t, this is not 86 degrees, the inverse sine of this thing. So I would say t is about 86 degrees. So this thing, you know, if I just compute this, this is one thing I want to show you. If I compute 14 sine of 63 divided by 12.5, I'm going to get a number. The number is 0.9979, okay? That's not the measure of the angle. So, you know, you can compute that first in your, in your graphing calculator too, and then you can do second sign, and then second answer key. So let me make this so you can see more of the calculator. Okay, so um, let me clear that. You do second sign, and then second, and then the answer key is the little minus down here. Bring this up. And it puts the answer from the last thing you did in there. And if you hit enter, you see you get the same exact. So here it is by doing the arc sign with all the stuff put in. Or you can just compute this number here and do second sign, second minus to put the, the last answer in. And the calculator will recall it and put it there for you. Okay, so that's the law of signs. I'm going to do some practice on that. Now... See, it bleeds through the paper, so I have to have a back a paper behind it. Now we have the law of cosines. Law of cosines. And I don't want you to be intimidated by this formula at all. It's going to look really scary, but it's not. Okay, in fact, let me just pull the book and show you in the book. So this is on page 583. There it is. 
in the blue box. Okay. So this is the law of cosines. So here's our generic triangle, right, with angles and opposite sides. And uh, you know, if we're having trouble using the law of sine solving a triangle, then you might want to use the law of cosines. Okay. So you see, there's three formulas. They're all the same exact formulas. Okay. What this is saying is this: a represents side a, right? So a squared is equal to side b squared plus side c squared minus 2 times b times c. So in a minute you'll see the pattern, I hope, times the cosine of the angle opposite this side. That's why if I need to find side b, let's say, then it's b squared is equal to the other two sides, a and c squared, the sum of the squares of a and c, minus 2 times a times c times the cosine of the angle B, which is opposite that side. Or if I want to find C squared. So again, after a little bit, after some practice with these, you're not even going to think about it. Just figure out, just take one formula, whatever letters you feel most comfortable with, and use it. Because you're going to see in a minute that, you know, while the patterns of the formula is going to be the same, we're going to be doing that. Um, it, all the formulas lead to the same answer um, for the angle or the side that you're looking for. And by the way, you know, um, so if I want to solve for the side, at the very end, I need to take the square root of both sides of this. Okay, so I'll show you what that is in a second. So <clears throat> the first example, the first example that's given, um, example three in the book, you have a triangle that looks sort of like this. A, and this is A, and this is B, and this is C, and this is 28 degrees, this is X, and this is 11. And I might try and use the cosine, or sorry, the law of sines to solve this. I'm like, gee, well, you know, I have side side angle situation, I might be able to use it, um, but I don't know, so, you know, I have the sine of A, which is unknown, over here. I don't have enough information to use it. So I'm going to try the log cosines. I need to find this side here, x. So I'm going to do the pattern. I'm going to use the formula. x squared is equal to. Now I know the angle opposite this side, so I can use the log cosines. It's equal to, I forgot by the way, there's a 9 here. <laughs> that helps. Okay, so x squared is equal to 9 squared plus 11 squared, so I'm just saying 9 squared plus 11 squared, the other two sides, minus 2 times 9 times 11, so 2 times 9 times 11, cosine of angle opposite this side, which is cosine of 28, okay? And to find the length of this side, it's really going to be like this. Now you're going to want to clean this up. You don't want to put this mess into your calculator because you risk making an error. Oh, I'm so sorry. My paper went off. Okay, so I want to clean up what's underneath the radical. 9 squared is 81. 11 squared is 121. Okay, so 9 times 11 is 99 times 2 is 198. So look, uh, a positive times a positive makes a positive, times a negative makes it a negative, okay? So again, I'm just going to check on my calculator because uh, 18 times 11 is, yeah, 198, cosine 28, okay? And now I'm going to clean it up a little bit more. I'm going to add 81 plus 121, which gives me 202, minus 198, cos 28. Now I can put that awful mess in my calculator. So let me put the calculator here. Let's do that. So let's try and straighten that out. So I'm going to press the square root key. Okay. It's going to be 202 minus 198 cosine 28. Close the parentheses and hit enter. And ooh, what you get is 5.2. So x, oops, sorry about that, 
x is 5.2. Now, this is interesting because in your book it says 5.2 degrees, but it's a side, and sides are not in degrees. So I think that's a little error in the book there. Because um, when you take the cosine of 28 degrees, you get a number, not another degree. So there's a little error in case you're trying to follow the book. Um, it's not 5.2 degrees, it's just 5.2. Let's do another one. Let me find another one. Here, I'm just going to throw the book. Oops. And let me grab a pencil because I really hate to, like, mess up the book. But I want to show you how easy this is. Let's if I can find my pencil. And if not, okay, well, the pencil must be in my other bag, and I'm on my rolly chair. Um, let me see here. If I can kind of push myself. Here it is. Sorry about that. Okay, so here's another one. <sighs> it's very hard to move. But anyway, okay, they want me to find x. Again, I'm looking for a side, okay? So if x is a side, it's x squared is equal to, pencil's not working out so good here, there we go. All right, so x squared is equal to side squared plus the other side squared, minus 2 times 15 times 19, cosine of what? 125, okay? And remember that since I'm solving this thing for x, put that there, uh, I'm going to remove the square here. If I take the square root of both sides, I get just x on this side. And I can go like that, right? So if I put this into my calculator, that's going to be really nice and easy. Okay, I'm just going to do square root. All right, 15 squared. So look, I'm not even going to clean it up this time. This time I'm just going to put it in plus 19 squared. You just got to be really careful when you do it. Minus 2 times 15 times 19. You notice I'm using parentheses just like you see it in the formula. Cosine. 125. Close the parenthesis, hit enter, and so the length of that side is about 30 units. Okay? Now there's more to the law of cosines, and we're going to cover that in the next video, or hopefully, maybe on Friday, or no, maybe on Monday. Maybe I'll be able to come to work on Monday. I don't know. But anyway, there's a little bit more to go that goes with this, but I don't want to overwhelm you at this point. So I'm posting a worksheet on Edsby. Your job is to get on your cell phone, pull up that worksheet, and you're going to do all of the problems with the law of sines and a little bit on the law of cosines in your notebooks. All right, and remember that if you have any questions, please post to Edsby so that way I can go over them with you. Um, practice makes perfect on these, so. Um, work together and work well and um, I'll answer any questions that you post. Have a good night.